Okay, so let's have a look at uh, fiscal implications. Uh, David alluded to that in his opening. Uh, can I say a 40 NHR? I suppose it's actually a very simple um, answer to that. Uh, uh, Darby, a good friend of the foundation, st stood on this podium, what, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks ago, just after the budget speech. And the title of his talk was, The Money is Finished and Claw. Okay, as emphatic as that. And uh, yeah, so that's I suppose the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some humor from Dr. Jack. The NHR, it might hurt the taxpayers a little bit, but don't stress too much is the messaging we get from, uh, from government. Okay, so I think in the context of looking at can we afford it and what we spend on healthcare, that's worth looking at some international comparisons. So this we did last year on a research paper that we published. So we took South Africa's per capita GDP. And then what we did is we found the country closest to double that uh, GDP, the per capita GDP, obviously all in, in equalized dollar terms. And we then found there were 25 countries between there. And we, we took all these 25 countries and we listed them all. There they're all up there. They're all developing upper middle income. Um, all of these countries are wealthier on a per capita GDP measure than South Africa. Okay, so they're all better off. We're the poor cousin in this cohort of 25. But if we go and look at the public health expenditure, um, this is how they map out in terms of those 25, 25 countries. The average across all of those countries, public health expenditure is 4.2%, and that's fractionally more than South Africa's current public health expenditure, 4.1%. Okay. So currently we're right in the norm, um, but what NHR wants to do is make public spend more than double that, 8.5% of GDP, which is virtually unprecedented globally. Okay. With the one exception, for those who are observant, notice the big blue bar on the left, which I've now circled in red, and that country is Cuba. We'll get to Cuba in a, in a slide or two to explain how that all works. Um, we plotted here yeah, on the same, the same research paper, we had a look at public health spend versus five-year mortality. Um, now using five-year mortality, um, it's quite a, it's a strong indicator of institutional performance in health systems. We could equally have used infant mortality or maternal mortality. The same picture would have emerged here. So we can take this as a proxy for the other two. Well, they are a proxy. So those same 25 countries we plotted out. Um, on the vertical scale on the left, the actual expenditure in dollar terms. And then on the bottom, the five-year mortality rate on the horizontal axis. So South Africa achieves the third worst five-year mortality rate out of these 25 countries. But if we have a look at the expenditure, either on or below the blue line, those are all the countries that spend either the same or less than South Africa. A lot of them, if we look at this green block, so there are 10 countries there that achieve significantly better five-year mortalities than we do, but they spend either the same as us or, in many cases, less to achieve that. Now, I said I'd come back to Cuba, and if we have a look there, it stands out as a big sore thumb. It's an extreme outlier in terms of expenditure on public health care. But it's, the NHR, is, and it's, it's not a secret, it's been blatantly stated by the NHR in a submission to the Health Portfolio Committee in Parliament that they were seeking to copy the Cuban health system because, for reasons I don't need to explain, they love Cuban everything. So... But it's similar, to, it's similar to the Cuban system in that it's, it would nationalize the entire all the health assets in the country. It's a single-payer monopoly model, and it would be centralized control, um, just like the NHR is proposing. And Cuba's public health spend is 11% of GDP. It's, it's either the highest or very close to the highest of any, any non-developed economy in the world. Um, if we have a look then at how efficient it is in that expenditure, in that red block, we can see there are eight countries that achieve similar five-year mortality rates, but at much, much lower cost, a fraction in many cases, which for my mind and for my money represents the inefficiency of centralized single-payer monopolies, most specifically those wanting to be run by the ANC government. 
as we can imagine. So Cuba does achieve good health, health outcomes. We'd have to, I'd have to reiterate that they do, but that it's exceedingly expensive um, because of the inefficiencies within that type of structure. If we come back to South Africa and have a look at what is our provincial public expenditure, I mentioned earlier that one of the diagnoses was the public sector has insufficient resources. So um, this was a study out of SA Health Review 2019, and they looked at um, provincial public expenditure from 2010 to the 2020 fiscal year. In the white block there, we can look at the nominal numbers. So the budget went from just over 90 billion to 200 and nearly 217 billion. If we then restated that in 2010 price, um, to obviously remove the factor of inflation, we then see that the real expenditure still increased by 50, nearly by over 50 percent. So very substantial increase in resources in a 10-year period. Obviously, the public budget is always uh, going to be divided out by the population, and yeah, I've used the uninsured population. So that's total population minus those covered on private medical schemes. So. Um, which is obviously relevant to what they cover. And there we see the population grew by 17.6% over that 10-year period. So if we then in the green block have a look at the per capita expenditure in real terms, this is the real value that, that gets derived out of the public budget. In real per capita terms, there's 28% more budget now, or in 2010, 2020 than there was in 2010. Okay. If we go back from 2000 to 2020, we get is an even bigger rise. It doubled from 2000 to 2020 in that real, per capita real measurement. So there's definitely not been any decline in resources in the Department of Health. Equally so, if we have a look at public sector medical personnel. So the I was relevant to look at is provider numbers per 10,000 uninsured population. Obviously, as the population grows, you want to see, are you attracting enough doctors to get into to the system and I compare on the blue bar 2006 and the orange bar with is 2019 so that's uh, what a 13 year spread over there and yeah we see in the I took the major the, the seven largest uh, categories these have the most medical personnel in each one um, <clears throat> as you can see in all but one category rather substantial increases in the number of medical personnel employed filled posts not advertised or approved posts actual filled posts so in terms of human resources there's not been a decline in fact there are 28 total categories clinical categories of medical personnel 25 out of the 28 improved from 2006 to 2019 okay so the department has had more money and more personnel medical personnel important to analyze that when we go and have a look at statements made during the NHR policy process, we get things like this. This was a former health minister, Sueli Nkizi, who said that the primary reason for the shortage of doctors, there is no shortage because they've gone up, is that the budget has not increased in real terms. Okay, so completely in contrast to what the reality is, it's simply not true. Um, the maldistribution of human resources between the private and public is the root of the healthcare crisis. This was Olive Shasano, who was chair of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on NHR and a massive proponent of the NHR Fund.